Okay, so everything seems to be recording. So welcome to episode three of Maxwell TV. So uh, this time, unfortunately, we don't have a special guest. I tried to contact a couple of people, but they were too unsure of their level of English. So I don't know. Maybe I can I can do a show where I translate for them. I mean, at least a, a French guy I could translate that in Spanish. <laughs> I'd have a problem with it. But it's just gonna be me this time. So it's going to be a little shorter episode and I'm gonna go through creating one of these fluffy carpets I think they're called shag carpets and uh, we're gonna do them with Maxwell grass to show you that they're pretty good for this and it's it's very I mean it's much better to do this with grass than with say displacement because especially if you want to add thin SSS or even real SSS it's gonna be much slower if you do it with displacement compared to just doing it with with Maxwell grass so I'm gonna go through creating a few materials and well first of all the grass the settings for the grass I can show you uh, let's see if it pops up okay we go so just to show you the, the scene quickly so it's just an emitter big emitter and here I have a plane with grass attached to it just turn these off and the way I modeled the plane is just that I made a little bevel Hopefully you can see that okay I made a little bevel so that I also have grass that sticks a little bit more to the sides like a real carpet so it's not just a flat plane that gives me also a little bit of more nice uh, thickness to the look of it as you can see here on the on the sides it looks a little bit better I think I should have made it even more slanted but anyway that's what the plane looks like and then I simply added two Maxwell grass modifiers and to go through this again I can just create a new grass to show you the settings that I used. So Maxwell grass. And so by default the setting is preset wild grass. And you can see here a preview of it in the viewport. And if you want to see more blaze of grass then just change the uh, display percentage here. Make sure you've selected the right one. So there's a little bit of noise. I don't know where it's coming from. Yeah, sorry, Fernando. I muted you because there were <laughs> was a little bit of noise there. Um, so then. You can change the display percentage to show all of them and then the maximum so you can get a much better idea of what it's going to look like from the viewport. Okay, and the way I did it was I changed from the wild grass preset to the golf green preset. And that gives you a lot of um, blast, uh, grass blades per meter. And I think you have to change the random seed to make the yeah to make the viewport update and change back the display percentage because these presets also hold the uh, display percentage in their presets. So change this back to 100. Let's say 10,000. So you get an idea of what that looks like. Even 100,000. Okay, so starting with the golf. Golf green is a good idea. So you get the right distribution, the density, the length. And what I did was I changed from flat to cylinder to get these little cylinders. So the grass is actually using the same primitive as the Maxwell hair when you're using the cylinder. And I increased a little bit the points per blade to about seven. So keep in mind that the more points per blade you have, the slower it's going to render. And I found because these uh, carpet fibers are going to be pretty short, around seven is, is good enough. I mean, you can have some more if you're doing a real close-up, but seven is pretty good. 
the density seems pretty good in this case. Actually, let me check what I did finally. So 40,000. Uh, this is maybe too much. Okay, let's make it 50,000 in this case. Uh, the length, well, actually, let me switch to one of these. So the length, two centimeters, length variation around 30%. They're going to be pretty much the same length in these carpets. I mean, it depends on the look of you're going for, of course. Uh, the initial angle was pretty small so that they start uh, straight up pretty much. And then the, the variation between 0 and 20 uh, is pretty high. So we get a nice uneven distribution, a chaotic angle, initial angle. And the start bend, so that's where they start bending from, from which height they're going to start bending. So if I look at this one, it starts bending around here. And you can change at which point it, it, it starts bending. So if you want like more curly looking hairs, you can start bending like maybe even at 20% if you want. And it's going to start bending much sooner. And also the start bend variation, so which variation along the length is going to start bending. The bend radius, so if you make this smaller, it's going to look more curly. You can see that. So if I make it just 0 0.1 centimeters, you can see here, this bend is really, really small. It has a really small radius. That looks a little bit strange. You can see here. Because the rest of the the rest of it is going to be you know straight, so you may not want that. Need a little bit bigger bend uh, radius, around one centimeter. All right, let's make it zero point six. Bend radius variation again. You can change the radius of that bend. I kept it at around fifty percent bend angle here you can really make it bend like a lot maybe that's even better than what I did <laughs> and if you make it bend a lot so 180 degrees then you can also lower the bend radius to have the more curly so you can see now sort of really curl up there and I can lower the bend radius percentage so all of them curl up and lower the bend angle variation so they all curl about the same amount maybe 25 so a little bit more variation you know this is not really what I did in, in, in the renders, but just to show you quickly how you can do these like curly uh, fibers in case you want that. And that can be pretty interesting for the look. OK. And that's it, basically, for the settings. And after the video, I'm going to make a preset of this and call it Shag Carpet. So you can just put it in your presets folder uh, and it will show up in this list. So I'm going to send that on the Maxwell Zone page. Okay, so let's get to the materials. So I'm going to show you two versions. I'm going to show you one like a dark carpet and then a, a typical off-white yellowish uh, look. So we can see what influence the thin SSS will have on, on both of these. So the way I started was actually, if I duplicate this, I just wanted to see what the different effects were of different materials. So if I duplicate this and start again. Uh, 
I don't know why I named it Dark White. <laughs> Strange name. Is it Dark or White? Um, just delete this. Everything. R2. The texture. So I really just started with a typical diffuse dark look for a material. I wanted to see what that looks like and also have a comparison with the render time to see how much uh, slower it was when I added an SSS and just to have a to be able to compare the looks and I just resize the Photoshop window. Okay, it's showing now. All right, so that's what that simple material looks like. This is what it looks like. And uh, it took about 12 minutes as a base and a benchmark of around 400. And of course, it looks pretty boring. It's just the exact same color, and there's not really a lot of highlights or uh, it doesn't really look very much like a fiber or a cloth would would look like. So then, before adding thin SSS, what I did was add the the R2 effect. So I added a sort of velvety effect. And if you want to see uh, details about that, I have a, a blog post about it on Maxwell Zone where you can see. Uh, how to work with the R2 parameters. So I'm not going to go into, into detail about that. And um, so by default, the material was like this with ND3. And when you're using the R2, I found out that to avoid an overall darkening of the material, you have to raise the ND quite a bit, but without checking force for now. So I just set it to ND20. And uh, in this case, I just left the defaults here, 75 angle. So the reflectance 90 color is going to start showing up at an angle of about 75 degrees from the viewing angle. And if I turn this auto, and then you have to lower the roughness, start lowering the roughness uh, to have the R2 effect show more and more. So you can see here with 98 what it looks like. There's a huge difference between 98 and let's say 95 you can see here how much brighter the R2 effect becomes if I set it to something like 91 it becomes really really visible but you have to be careful you know not to go too low on the on the roughness because those those fluffy fibers are going to be starting to look too metallic I mean too much like a let's say a satin look so if you don't want that for your carpet then just keep it at around 95 to still have a pretty strong R2 effect okay so that was my second attempt and it looked like this Come on, I'm waiting for the screen to update. There we go. Okay, so this was the initial one, and with the R2, it added, uh, I mean, it made it a lot more interesting and make it look more alive, more fiber-like, I think, compared to this one, which just looks pretty flat and dead. Okay, so this is without thin SSS, just the R2. Okay, and now to add the thin SSS, do a test with that. Uh, 
So I'm adding the thin SSS in a, let's say, special way, because while I was doing leaves with thin SSS, I found out that it, there's a much more efficient way to add the thin SSS effect besides adding it to the same BSTF. So instead of adding some transmittance here and turning on uh, uh, the, the coefficient here to turn on uh, subsurface scattering and checking single-sided and so on, I found out it's it's sufficient to actually put it in a layer above in additive mode. And what we're going to add is uh, just the thin SSS effect, which is going to be sort of superimposed, excuse me, on the rest of the material because it's in additive mode. And I'm going to set both the reflectance 0 and 90 to black. I'm going to set the roughness to 0. And this way, it's just the transmittance effect or the, the thin SSS effect that's going to be superimposed on the rest of the material. So I'm going to turn on, let's say, a color. Have it approximately close to what the base color is of the carpet. I'm going to use a pretty usual ND. It's not that important in this case. And uh, of course, changing the attenuation to something more realistic. So in this case, I'm thinking, you know, how far, how deep does the light go into these fibers before they lose about half of their energy? And I think a realistic value would be around one millimeter, 1.5 millimeters, something like that. Um, so the roughness, I'm just setting it to zero because it makes it a little bit more efficient in that case. Um, and we don't really care because we, we're not going to have any, any reflections here. Okay. We're just going to have the thin SSS effect, uh, because, uh, I set these to black and I'm not using force for now. So the roughness doesn't really matter. I just, I notice it's a little bit more efficient if you then set the roughness to zero and we add a little bit of, um, the coefficient to switch on the subsurface scattering and of course set it to single sided. And uh, for this thickness, again, I, I'm leaving it to about the same as I have the attenuation here. And if I switch to leave, you can see what that looks like. So this is a backlit scene just to get an idea that the thin SSS is working, what the material looks like. And if I set it to negative asymmetry, so for thin SSS, the asymmetry is really, really, really important. You're going to have more backlit, uh, so the backlit effect will become stronger. And on the other hand, when you're looking at the material from the front, uh, then the front is going to become a little bit darker because more of the light passes through the object and instead becomes more backlit. So in this case, because we're using tubes, I was thinking that I'm not really going to see the back side of, of uh, that material and I want to see it a little bit brighter. So I kept the front, uh, so to have the front of the fibers uh, brighter, I didn't use a negative asymmetry. Even when you play with this, you can also test it to see what difference it makes to have a positive asymmetry instead. Now in this particular scene, of course, it's going to have a darkening effect because I'm seeing the back side of the, this plane. But if I switch it to, let's see, this previous scene, overall, it's going to make a, a brighter material. Okay, so in my case, I kept the asymmetry at zero. Right, so that was the thin SSS test. And let me show you what that looks like. So the thing is, for, the, for a darker carpet, it's not going to make that much of a difference. because the fibers are so dark anyway. So uh, I'm just going to show you here in Photoshop. The screen pops up. 
Okay, so this is within SSS and this is without. Okay, without and with. And I mean, there is a little difference here if you really zoom in, you can see the, the effect of it in SSS, but uh, I mean, it does, does give a little bit more of a fluffy look, but for dark carpets, it's not really that important. And also the, um, the time, of course, is, is slower now. It's about twice as slow in this case, 29 minutes versus 14 minutes with an SSS for all these little fibers. So just to show you that if you're going to make a dark carpet, maybe thin SSS is not that that important of an effect, uh, especially when you're going to have light coming in from, from several directions, not just in one direction, like in this test scene. So maybe you can do without the thin SSS for dark carpets and save on, on the render time. Uh, right, so before moving, moving on with a light carpet, I wanted to show you some uh, texturing options you have when you're going to texture your your carpets because the the texturing for grass works in exactly the same way as it does for Maxwell hair meaning you have two UV channels really you have one the UV channel 0 which is going to be which is going to map a texture along the fiber or, or along the grass blade in this case or the the cylinder in in, in this case I use the cylinder. Um, so you can have, for example, a fiber that starts off dark and then towards the tip it's lighter. Or you can have a, a, a root that's, let's say, blue and then a tip that's light blue. Okay, And in that case, you're going to use UV channel 0 in your texture. And then you have UV channel 1, which is going to use the UVs that are applied to the actual plane where you have Maxwell grass uh, applied. So you need some real UVs on this plane, and it's going to take the UVs from that to map a pattern that you want to have for your entire carpet. Okay, and I'm just going to show you quickly how you can do that and different options you have. Um, so in this one, so I added a new layer. I just copied really the BSDF from the bottom with the R2. I copied it to a new layer in normal mode and here I mapped and you can actually also use the procedurals for this so I added a noise a procedural noise and I made sure to set it to channel 1 okay so not channel 0 and if I switch this on and render with it at 100%, so it's going to hide everything underneath, we're just going to see what this texture looks like. And to make it a more sort of a fluffy look, I also added the same noise in the Reflectance 90. I just simply made the, the colors brighter. So I still get this little velvety effect even when I'm using the procedurals. All right, and that looks something like this. I'm waiting for that to show up. Okay, so you can see that the, the uh, procedural noise uh, in this case is uh, is mapped on the on the plane on the underlying plane here. So you can get some nice carpet textures or patterns. You can use uh, procedurals, and you can of course also use bitmaps. Uh, for example, well, I'm going to show you that with the white carpet later on. Okay, and Keep in mind also that you can use these uh, noises or masks. You can also use them as a layer weight. So in this, uh, in this white material, for example, I'm going to show you, I used it here in the layer weight for this layer. 
and here I set the color to to be something darker so I have the the white overall carpet and where the mask is here it's going to be the star color here from from this BSDF and of course I set the the UV channel to one here for this mask so that is it's using the UVs of the plane not the UVs of each fiber and then of course on top of this you can also add more variation um, by let's say instead of here instead of mapping just a color I can add a texture I can add a gradient and use a top to bottom gradient and let's set the the tips are going to be this color let's say bright actually let's make it a faded orange copy that to the root and make this a brighter orange so make this brighter so it's more evident of what happens okay so the the channel zero here is going to map each of the of the grass uh, fibers let's say in this case from from bottom to top the tip is here the root is here and keep in mind that it's only going to use the first um, the first uh, column so to speak of pixels here so it doesn't matter how big the texture texture is it's only going to use the first column here for the grass uh, fibers right so actually I can do a test render of that hopefully nothing crashes and the recording still works I'm just gonna do a quick render so you can get an idea of what that does uh, so while that renders let's go through the white material okay so the same principle here I just changed the color to make it brighter I'm still going to use um, the R2 effect to have a more soft velvety look it's not so clear here because the reflectance zero color is also pretty bright but anyway it gives a little bit of an effect and if you want more you can always lower the roughness even more So then it becomes a little bit more clear. And then the thin SSS, I added transmittance. Again, reflecting 0, 090 black, roughness at 0. I added a little bit of coefficient. So it doesn't matter if you make it uh, 100 or 1,000 in this case with the thin SSS and these uh, closed cylinders that we're using. Uh, it just matters to have something a non-zero value so you turn on the the thin SSS and one millimeter thickness and that's it pretty much so I also have thin SSS and then I wanted to add a pattern to my pat to my carpet so in this case I used uh, a texture as a mask set it to channel one so it's using the UVs of the plane that the grass is attached to and I set this to a darker color and what that looks like is actually not this one Oh, it looks like I have to start the rendering again. I was using the wrong angle. One moment, please. Okay, 
So that white material with the mask and the darker color looks like this. Let's see if the screen shows up. Okay, so you can see that it's a pretty easy way to add different patterns to your carpets and uh, of course when <laughs> I'm sure you're going to do a nicer looking pattern than this, but you can see how easy it is to, to add it to your carpets and uh, this looks a lot better than displacement really because uh, I, I've seen quite a few renders where people uh, were using displacement for these types of carpets and uh, especially again if you add thin SSS, uh, even if you're not adding uh, you know, regular subsurface scattering, uh, it's probably going to be a lot slower using displacement for these types of thing uh, compared to grass with the cylinder uh, primitive. It looks quite nice. I mean, even if you were to zoom in in some renders, it's going to look quite nice. And what I did here also was uh, combine some thinner uh, fibers with the other thicker fibers just to see what it looks like um, to give it a little bit more variation in those fibers if you want you can do that and uh, so to do that I just I duplicated the first Maxwell grass so this one I just right clicked copy and then paste and this one and the only thing I did was change the uh, the width here from from three millimeters to one millimeter and of course you can also add a third one you know and make these even even thinner if you want to have like really thin uh thin fibers and uh maybe for these uh, thin ones you can change the the bend radius to be a lot smaller so you can have those curly looking fibers and uh, set the bend angle to maybe even 300 degrees so you can have a lot of curly little hair fibers Oops. you know and these the, these thin ones are going to look really curly like that and uh, let's say start bend you can start at 20 percent uh, even 10%. Okay, so the, the bend starts from the 10% of those uh, 2 centimeters. Then it's going to bend on a maximum of uh, 300 degrees. You can even change this to 400. Oh, 400. No. Or maybe it's limited to 360. Okay. Yeah, it's limited to three, 360 degrees. Okay, so you can have really curly, fine fibers that are going to be combined with those thicker ones for maybe even more realism and chaos. Okay, and let's see how this render is going. So you can see the... Well, in this case, it's not really that clear what the root tip does because I only applied it to, to the mask here, the carpet of the mask. Uh, and also, I think one of the materials I used for one of the Maxwell grass didn't have this uh, the white material applied. So it's blending with other fibers that have another material applied to it. But anyway, you you get the idea. You have a lot of uh, of uh, possibilities to quickly texture your carpets and make it look exactly like you want. Uh, let's see.
So just to make it clear, each of these Maxwell grass primitives can have a different material here. You can even have different back face material if you want, but that makes more sense for the grass. doesn't really make sense in this case since we're using the cylinder uh, primitives and, and we're not seeing the back face of, a, <laughs> of the inside of the cylinder. Okay, so each of these can also have slightly different materials. They have more variation. And uh, even for a darker carpet, it can make sense to to use a little bit of the uh, the procedural textures, the procedural noise, or even marble to give a little bit of variation in your in your in your material. So, for example, here you can see a very subtle uh, noise I used with very subtle changes in brightness of the base color compared to just the flat color here. You know, just to have that look like, you know, where it's brushed in a certain way, it's a little bit darker and where it's brushed in the other way, it's a little bit lighter. You have carpets like that. Okay, so I think that's it for these things. I mean, right, I can also show you the, the white material test here. Um, let's see if this updates. Yeah, uh, so this was the, the white material just without thin SSS and it's about the same time as the, the dark material. I mean, it's a little bit slower, but not by that much. This one was 14 minutes and the, the light one was uh, 19 minutes. And uh, here adding the thin SSS. And you can see for the lighter carpet, it does make quite a bit of a difference to add the thin SSS. So, I mean, it did take uh, 32 minutes instead of 19. But I think it's worth it if you're gonna use a lighter looking carpet. And in this case, I kept the, the layer weight of the additive layer to 100% and that get, didn't give me any problems uh, because I used a, a pretty low attenuation distance, you know, so keep that in mind that you, know, you have to use realistic values. I mean, if you, uh, especially if you set a bright transmittance color like I, I did in this case, almost white, uh, and you set the attenuation distance to let's say 30 centimeters, you're probably going to get some artifacts and, and dots in, in, in the render. Because then the light, you, you know, you're just telling Maxwell that there's practically no attenuation between all the light bounces between all these little fibers. So then uh, you're gonna have <laughs> problems. All right, so keep the attenuation distance to realistic values. In this case, about one, millimeter one and a half millimeters and this difference here the last one is just I added a second Maxwell grass with much thinner uh, fibers here one millimeter versus three millimeters to see what that looks like compared to this one it just makes it look a little bit fluffier too I think and it didn't actually slow down the the benchmark in this case with two uh, Maxwell grass primitives. The benchmark stayed pretty much the same in the render time. All right, I think that's it for me. I Let's see if I unmute people. They mute themselves. You muted yourselves, <laughs> right? Any questions, any comments on this? Hello? Fernando, are you there? Oh, uh, questions. Oh, let's see. Oh, Mirza, you can't unmute yourself? <laughs> Strange. I'm... Try again, maybe. Ah, there we go. I was muting you, maybe. No, I, <laughs> I mean, 
I, really nice, super in depth. I don't have any questions. Just wanted to say thank you. All right. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> thanks for attending. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope this was useful. Um, I mean, I made a pretty simple example, but you can make a much more realistic one with, you know, blending much more fibers and the curly ones and all that stuff. Uh, I think also if the base, base geometry would be a bit more like, uh, uh, what's the word? Like, uh, if, if the fabric was, a, if it was a bit more organic, like if you run it through some cloth simulation, and then add it to uh, Oh, right, yeah, of course. <coughs> that, that would even add up a bit more. Yeah, sure. I mean, the main point I think people should take from this is that, uh, you know, stop using displacement if you want to make rugs like this. Yeah. And, uh, and Maxwell grass is much better for it with the cylinder preset, really. For sure. Yeah. And uh, the cylinder is best because even if you switch the camera angle, you're not going to get those uh, infinitely thin uh, blades of grass, which yeah. can, can look a little bit weird. Yeah, of course. Mm. That's it. Well, we can banter for the rest of the time if you guys like. How's it going, Mircea? How's uh, business? Pretty fine. Yeah? It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, I just I, I just have a kind of a day where I have to uh, uh, do like farm maintenance. <laughs> and uh, I have like moving boxes around and I realized like I, I've been in this office for like four years and now I had like like uh, so many cables that I don't even uh, need anymore some somewhere behind the closet it's oh my god this is so off topic but yeah I, I just had like office maintenance it started with a simple uh, shit I have to install something on this computer and then it was just like everything disassembled and, and now I'm I'm standing in a pile of open computers <laughs> but it's fun I'm totally unrelated to anything, sorry. <laughs> no, it's related. It's just, uh, it, it's nice to hear from other people, you know, how their their business is, what they do, you know, what their clients are and things like that. I'm, sure. I mean, I'm sure everybody has funny stories with people they that drove you nuts and <laughs> people that didn't pay or paid uh, three months later and stuff like that. The, the classic things, yeah. Yeah, yeah the classic there's... things. There's that as well. <laughs> hmm. But uh, where are you located, by the way, in, in uh, Slovenia, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm from Ljubljana. It's the, the capital of Slovenia. Uh, yeah. It's a super small country, super small capital, but it's it's nice. We uh, like geograph in in geographical terms, we've got like a, a whole bunch of stuff going on in this small plot of area. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, actually, I, the Alps to the there's something I find very, very strange. Maybe you can tell me. I mean, every sporting event, every sporting event I look yeah. to, there's always somebody yeah. from Slovenia. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, it could be skiing or, I don't know, kayaking, bicycling. There's always somebody from Slovenia. What do you guys do? I mean, yeah. do you, like, take yeah, man, your kids like... from three years old, like the Spartans, and just <laughs> make them do, like, yeah. high sports? What's what's going on? Not that hardcore. Yeah, yeah but people people do, like, like low, I mean, it's in the culture, I guess, or, or something. It's like, yeah, yeah, people do a lot of sports. Yeah. So you're uh, very healthy people. Like, yeah, I don't know. It depends. <laughs> Maybe the guys that don't work behind computers all day are. No, no, but we're all good. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. A lot of people do sports, uh, which is which is cool. And then yeah. they they get nice results in the Olympics. And I think yeah, we won the Eurobasket and stuff. I mean, yeah. For 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 a small country, I mean, how many million are you? <laughs> two man <laughs> two million two million yeah, You're yeah. Everywhere. i looked at the olympics everywhere like yeah man skiing. we're like a demo version of a, of a country but it's yeah it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, nice. it's nice yeah ski all types of skiing is like national sports here and super popular so mm -hmm. skiing is a is a big thing right yeah, yeah. Mm. cool uh so Let's see. Uh, I hope there's some real news about Maxwell soon. Hopefully. Uh, 
Yeah. So yeah. getting to the GPU stuff. How many GPUs do you have in total? Uh, just two. Because I, I, um, I have one uh, in my workstation and I have another in my uh, colleague's workstation. I have a friend helping me out. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a 1080 Ti and a 1070 and that's it. And the rest is just CPUs. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to being able to slap some GPUs in these boxes. Yeah, I mean, for my tests, I've seen especially exteriors, they're much, much faster on, on yeah, the GPU. Yeah. Mm. yeah, 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 it's, it's pretty dope. Um, so do you do yeah, a lot of awesome. exteriors or interiors? Would you say it's like 50-50 um, or is it mostly interiors? Yeah, it totally depends. It totally depends. It's like, uh, yeah. yeah, depending on the project. But if it's like this classical real estate... Uh, thing where uh where they want to present the building like as a whole and everything it's usually exteriors and and interiors right oh have some visitors <laughs> oh, okay uh, not anymore <laughs> yeah I, I work in this co-working space and it's always people around so it's pretty cool and mm -hmm. somebody just tried to get in <laughs> And uh, what would you say? I mean, you've been using Maxwell for for quite a long time, right? Yeah, for like ten years, I think. Wow. Uh, yeah, since since uh, like I don't know, second year of faculty, or first year of faculty, I just mm. uh, uh, I was using uh, I was using SketchUp since then, and uh, and there was this uh, super easy fast plugin called Podium, and I gave that a try, and Maxwell. Of course, I love the Maxwell quality, but my one core laptop back then wasn't able to, to, to do stuff pretty fast. So I did like personal things in Maxwell, but faculty stuff in that. And then slowly yeah. I also learned some things and were able to, uh, to do stuff in Maxwell faster or I don't know. So what would you say, I mean, besides speed, of course, because everybody says speed right away, but what what would yeah. you say would be a nice new feature for you that that you would like to see in, uh, in you know, in Maxwell? I mean, I'm thinking maybe people are missing a lot of uh, uh, to to quickly randomize, let's say, colors to make for, for vegetation or trees, stuff like that. Is that something yeah. you would find useful or? Maybe, perhaps. Uh, I mean, like I, I realized, I, I I I have always been the full 3D full CG guy since like the beginning, yeah. and then along the, the way, or I mean, uh, as as I continued the career or, or whatever, I took also some workshops which were more like uh, like Photoshop um, related. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like you know the things we discussed in, in the first episode. I realized that I don't have to do everything. And, in full 3D to achieve a certain effect. So, so mm. whenever possible, you know, I, I, I would, I would try to combine the best and the fastest of both. Right. Uh, so, in, you know, I, I just got this idea because you said, you know, like to randomize colors, like in, 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 in grass or something. I, I would, I would do it in post, I guess, because it will be faster. Uh, but mm. uh, I don't know. I, I was thinking about the, the same thing that. I mean, because we already talked about this last time, I guess, I don't know, just like the full functionality of the GPU, uh, CPU on a GPU, and that, that will add up quite some speed, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, I, I was thinking, um, you know, especially people doing ArcVis, like, let's say for a wooden floor, and you have a, a nice yeah. huge wooden texture, and you just want each mm -hmm. plank of your wooden floor to use a slightly different portion, of that texture, yeah. you know, so uh, a UV randomizer, or something like that. I yeah, think. yeah. But I think, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I can actually already do this in, in, in SketchUp, I guess. Just use one material and and then have like sections, uh, uh, planes, and then it randomizes. Uh, I don't know. No, sorry, I don't know how to explain this. But <laughs> yeah, it would be cool to have it built in. Yeah, to build it into the material, stuff like that. Yeah, maybe we should make a post on the forum to see what people would like to see, like the intermediate features, you know? Yeah, sure. I mean, the thing that really is teasing me quite a lot lately is the Substance Painter. And mm -hmm. 
I, w- I would be really happy if there was some like super easy like a con- material converter or like a workflow way to handle, yeah you know some some compatibility like native so that, w- that would be wonderful yeah i was thinking to do an episode the next episode do something with uh, substance painter and designer yeah. to show people how to to, to recreate the or the looks yeah the looks and then uh, yeah i want to talk with uh, with abraham from next limit because he did the whole pi maxwell thing the python maxwell connection i think it would be pretty easy okay. to take the to take the actual inputs the actual output maps from substance painter or substance designer and then with pi maxwell he would just create the material for you automatically and uh you would like that right <laughs> that would be nice yeah i mean that would be nice. Oh, we love it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, so yeah, some something like this, I guess, because because substance is a pretty huge thing lately, and rightfully so. And it would be really cool to have this connection between them. Right. And do you use both substance designer and substance painter? Or, or... I don't use them. I, I just gave them a spin and uh, oh, okay, the, the demo thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a while ago, so I couldn't find a nice way to connect it then. Mm. Because I was thinking mostly you would need three material categories. One would be metal, one would be yeah. like like plastic, and one would be a combination where you'd maybe have you know metal with with or painted metal. Uh, I think those those would be the three main categories for the automatic conversion. Yeah, mm. probably. Um, yeah, I really have to see what would be the best way to convert those yeah okay i see christoph hello can you hear us yes hello christoph how are you hi good i'm eating you're eating yes oh <laughs> bon appetit. <laughs> bon appetit, yes, yeah. well yeah. thanks for showing up and uh well, I, I guess I won't keep everybody. Uh, sorry, Mitchell, maybe you have stuff to do and keep asking you things. Oh. <laughs> cool, it's fine, man. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna specify in the YouTube video. You know, the the banter starts from this <laughs> moment on, so people right. don't have to watch it thinking they're gonna have interesting info, <laughs> Maxwell <laughs> secrets. <laughs> um, Christoph, would mm. would you like to add something? No. Did you look at the presentation or did you arrive now? I didn't pay attention. Just arrive. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I'm going to pause the recording as usual. If you have any questions, okay. just ask me. Okay. Okay, well, we'll let you eat then. <laughs> okay, thank you. Cool. Uh, cool. Okay. All Thanks, right. Uh, no problem. See you in the next episode. <laughs> Um, yeah, I hope I can make it on the 8th. I had somebody, because it's International Women's Day, as you may know, ah, yeah, on the 8th of March, and I wanted to ask Anita. She made some nice renders. I think she's from Australia. Yeah, I yeah. sent her an email and see if she's available. Uh, but uh, I'm also going to have um, uh, Matthew Cherry from the forum on the 22nd, oh. I think. It'll be fantastic. Yeah, I just saw the post that you posted today, and yeah, that's he, a pretty, pretty amazing thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he makes some really nice like integrations with renders and photos. So, it should be really interesting to see his workflow and how he approaches yeah, you know, sure. the render and stuff. Yeah, that's mm. to look forward. To, so. Yeah, that will be on the twenty second March. Okay. All right. Thanks for thanks for showing up. Thanks for the yes. talk. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Yes. Thank you. Bye, bye. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao, Christophe. Ciao, Fernando. Bye.